I'm making a really super simple bench, okay? I've cheated a little bit as well because instead of buying planed material and putting like a little sort of edge on, a radius on to soften the edges, I've actually bought some material which is more designed for saunas. The reason I did that is because it's going as a changing bench. So just like a sauna would have lots of slats of the right kind of material, of course, because it's moisture and it's kind of wet area, this is exactly the same thing. And I went onto the internet because I believe you can find anything you like on the internet. And I searched for sauna timber. And I found a company who were able to supply me this packs of this amazing timber. It's Alder, A-L-D-E-R, Alder, okay? And um, it's beautifully smooth. I've got to literally cut it to length, just sand the ends, and then make a bench, which is gonna have a slat under each end to support them just inwards. Those will be in line with these stainless steel brackets, which get mounted back on the wall. It's a stud wall, and I know where the studs are, so I can just drill through, it's porcelain on the wall, so I've got to drill through the porcelain, put the brackets up, and then make the slatted bench and mount them from underneath. I'm gonna put everything together with stainless steel screws, even though it's not technically like soaking wet in there. You know what it's like, if you're gonna sit on there wet and the water runs around, those screws may corrode. Or if your extractor fan doesn't work properly, moisture gets on that metal work, it will corrode and it could stain the wood. So I'll show you where we're doing that. We're coming in here and it's gonna travel through here from wall to wall, okay? It's gonna consist of as many slats as it needs to have and they're gonna be spaced quite close together. So as I say, I've got to drill through the porcelain. So I use these little diamond bits here. Anyone who drills through porcelain knows it can be a real problematic thing. So that's the first job, get those drilled through and then we'll make the bench. Got a couple of, couple of bits here and you never know how worn these are until you start using them. They're not hard to use. It's just a matter of being patient with them as okay? K. And so they do say you can do these wet or dry and you can get all manner of devices. You can even get these ones that fit on an angle grinder now. Indeed, I've got some bigger ones because I've done some 25 millimeter holes through the porcelain. They were really easy. But the idea is you want to start with the edge at about 45 degrees. And once you've started with the edge at 45 degrees, then you can slowly bring the drill up. If you don't do that and you try to go in without some sort of board with a hole in it, it will skate around and it could scratch the tile. So that's the first job. I've marked a couple of the holes up. We'll go and get those done first. It could take a while, but here we go. I always keep a little pot of water to dip the drill bit in anyway. As I say, my studs are exactly behind here. The next one's 1200 over. Um, so what I'm going to do is literally put the battery against there, it gives me some rigidity, and just start it off nice and slow. And what I've got is I've cut a little crest there, like a little half moon, and that's basically that part of the cutter. Um, and it's got me started. So the battery really helps in, the, in this case because I'm using that as the, my stability. If you were trying to do that before, as I say, you're gonna skate around all over the shop. Anyway, this isn't gonna happen. So we're gonna go back in there. And now I can start bringing the drill up to square and level. By now, that's getting a bit warm, that. So I still think it's worth popping it in a bit of water. And also, I, I reckon that that really helps keep the diamonds clean. The other thing I'm doing is rotating slightly, okay? And all that's doing is just giving myself a bit of clearance as well. Um, I'll be interested to hear anyone else's techniques as well, whether they do that as well. I've worked with a lot of tilers and you always see them doing that and easing the hole. So I'm about 75% of the way through. You listen to it, you hear it's warm. But I do think it's important to keep it clean and cool it down a little bit. I just think personally, that's why they last me quite a long time, these drill bits. And as a guide for me, 
My tiles are roughly the thickness of that, so I know for a fact once I get towards the end of there, I'm nearly through. It's about nine or 10 mil, I'd say. There we go, so I'm through. So that took me a couple of minutes. Obviously, I'm stopping to commentate, but it, um, now I know that I've got three more holes. It's gonna take me the best part of 15 minutes to do, providing I don't go mad. And the other thing that's important as well, vacuum cleaner, potentially. I've got a nice brand new floor and some wipes. It's just good to get that residue off there. Before I start work on the slats or cutting them, I'm just gonna mount these stainless steel brackets. It's really key here that you don't over tighten anything through tiles with an impact driver. So it's always worth finishing them off by hand. The other notable thing was these brackets, even though they came as a pair, I set the first one out and I leveled the screw hole over the top screw hole. But before I drilled it, I actually tried a spirit level on to that one, holding the bracket in place. And the actual hole was in a different position. So again, that can catch you out. We'll cut the slats, okay? We'll measure the slats and cut the slats. I've got one actually I've cut roughly to length. It will be on top of a carrier, which is a bearer running this way, which gives us the length we need. I'm gonna start by cutting my bearers, which the actual slats will mount to, and that will fix up into the brackets. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a detail on, which is just like a carpentry, a detail that's something we would do for a bearer. the slats are going to be passing across. What I don't want to look at is that end. I don't want to look at that flat end there. What's much nicer is if we put a 45 degree angle on the end, so we take this off, it will give it a really nice relief, okay? So we're going to effectively take off this corner here. So we'll bring the saw around to 45 here. It doesn't have to be 45, it can be less. I personally like 45, all things equal and then we'll take that off, okay? But before I take that off, I'm gonna mark exactly where the end of it is here. So when I put the next one in, I'm gonna mark it, I just go to the line. So we'll take that off now. Pop the next one in. I've got a little mark right here, and then we go again. And so therefore, we've now got this lovely looking detail on the end. So when we actually have our slats coming through, we'll hang the first slat over a little bit. And that looks really, really nice. You look at the difference between that and that. And all that is, is one more cut. But it just looks much, much, much nicer. So now we can go and set out the slats in the other side. What I'll do is I'll butt that against the wall and then I'll relate it to the front of the door. And I want the actual slat to finish with the front of the door. I think that'll look quite nice if it's all quite seamless. So if that was the last slat that we're with the front of the door, just back a hair. I, and I want to keep the bearer back five or six millimeters from there as well, roughly that height there. So I think what we need to do is butt that against the wall to the door Keep it back six, and this will give me my final length. Now to make sure they're both the same, I'll put them in the saw together and cut them off at the same time. So we'll quickly whiz that off, hold them flush, clamp them together, and I know I've got two exactly the same pieces then. So we'll just line that through. Okay, let's go and set it out. This is basically the bench supports. They're gonna go on there, and then all of our runners are gonna come through starting just off the wall. This is where we need to work out how many we're gonna use with a nice little margin in between. So we're gonna fine tune that now, get those slats all together, upside down. We'll pilot and countersink these from the underneath to fix them into the slats with the stainless steel screws. And uh, that's pretty much it. Then we just have to put it in and mount it. So it is a quick, easy job. There's something that you can knock out in no time at all, but it's the sort of thing you look back and feel really proud of. I'm gonna have a little gap at the back, okay? And I wanna, I wanna hang over the front, okay? So the gap at the back and the hang over the front could be exactly the same because when you slide it all over. So let's just take the overall length of the slat for now. 
so it's 355 millimeters. All we need to do to set that out, get a bit of scrap wood. In fact, this is perfect. This is the, the length we're traveling here. We're starting with the slat flush to the front. So you could just take a six mil spacer and you could crudely, you could crudely work it out like this, you know, just keep placing everything across and hopefully meet at the right place on the other end. And once you've got that, you know you're good to go, all right? But even if one was six and one was five, you're never gonna read it, okay? Don't care who you are. And then you're gonna get to the end. In fact, you can see that six is probably not generous enough. And that's because when you measure these slats, it's probably a mil or so less. So we're probably on around about seven millimeters. We're gonna get on now and actually cut the slats, cut the slats that we need, which is five. I'll pick five good ones um, from here, which they're all pretty good. Straighter the better. That's not bad. Again, that's pretty good. Now some of them have got a little bit of a cup on the up, so we want to actually lay them out and see how they lay together before we spread them out. This is what it's all about, is sorting it out and making sure you use the best. I've bought a little bit more than I need because it's such good value, this stuff. So we'll discard that one and put that one back. So those two are lovely. Switch this one round end to end. I think that'll be better. End to end there. By shuffling around, you're going to get the best configuration of the timber. And once you've got that configuration, then we're good to go. So we've got 1670. I reckon that that's probably just about enough with that little space at either end. So we're going to go and cut five at 1670. I can clamp them all together like so and put them in the saw together and cut them off and you know you're going to be exactly right as well. So we've got a nice true end there and then we can literally take all that wainy bit off the other end to 1670. There we go. So that's eliminated any error. They're all the right length now. So now we've got our slats. We're ready to assemble that and get it together. Let's go. So what we want to do is put the best sides down because we're going to work on the underside now. Um, so we're going to look through them and we're going to check which is the best sides. And I think what we'll do is we'll put the bows upwards so anyone sitting on them are going to push them down. Have a quick sort out to make sure they're the best way round as well. Let's have a quick look at that. Let's put that one at the back there. It's probably better there. Make sure they all work nicely together. And the bearers, of course, we're gonna screw on in the right places here. So we're gonna space them out. We'll screw the M one where it needs to be. We'll screw this one where it needs to be and then we'll space the others accordingly. And what I'll do for ease is get my packers, just pack them all and fix them. So I've got a rod, so it's just a piece of timber the same length, and all I'm gonna do is mark the center of the brackets here and here. That's what we're gonna set everything out with. Just always the nicest way of doing things instead of trying to measure and set things out. So we just push that with the end of there, put that in the middle there, put that in the middle there, and that's where we're gonna start from. So we're gonna leave a space at the back, the bearers will hit the wall, and we're then gonna space things out. So it's eight mil for each one. So that will be a setback from the front both ways, and we've got that lovely detail there. We've got that nice little space at the back as well. So we roughly wanna be there. So all we need to do now is set out our fixing points on the bearers here. And even though they're upside down and we can't see them, we can still do that neatly, making sure that I'm here and I'm here, and I'm here. And by doing that, you, the closer the screws are to each other, the more chance you've got splitting. But we are going to pilot and countersink everything. So there's less chance of that. And we want a decent pilot hole through this. So the screw bites into the bit underneath and holds everything super tight. So we'll put a small pilot with a countersink, then I'll enlarge that hole 
as well. On a decent pilot. So we're ready to rock. Now the screws will bite into their tie and I don't necessarily want that to happen because I want them to pull the slats up. So I will increase these slightly to a little bit bigger than the screw. And then I know everything can move around and sort of work together nicely. So we'll just enlarge those. And the reason I countersink them first is because if you do this and put a countersink in, it jumps around and creates some problems. So. And there we have it. So we're going to mount them on and screw them on. Now the key result is we can start off from the first one nice and true and central and square and then we're going to have to start setting everything out nice and flat and straight, okay? So we're going to give ourselves our little space at the back and we're going to screw that on and then we're going to straighten everything up and square it all up. So we can just drop a couple of stainless steel screws in and we'll bite those into that bearer. Now we could glue this together as well. Um, generally speaking, the screws are plenty strong enough. And sometimes when you glue stuff, it can't move as much as well. A lot of tabletops are never, are never glued other than the top. When they go into the bearers, they actually put a slot so the table can shrink and expand and contract. And that's a nice fixing. I'm on the center line of our bracket, of course, still. Now what we can do with this is obviously you can use the end of the ply. So I've got a nice straight edge of ply here. So I could clamp a level onto the end of here. And we're using the edge of the ply now to be nice and true. Because what we know about sheet material is it's always generally pretty square. And just gently slide all that up to the top. There we go. All against there. So now we've got a nice straight end and we'll pull it forward to the front of the ply, both ends. Make sure we're nice and true. And then it's just a matter of screwing it all up. Pull out the spaces at that end. Get my screws in the other end. And there we have a basic bench. Nice and solid, nice and secure. And we'll go and try that in. So we just want to rock that down there gently and slide it home. And that's basically what we're looking for. So as I say, it was only a short, sweet video, but it was so satisfying. You know, we just make a very simple bench. All I've had to do was cut the timbers to length, arrange them, screw them together, fix the brackets on the wall, and there you have it. You know, it's such a satisfying thing to do. And as I said, this material is designed for saunas, so it's absolutely perfect for using in a changing area. Thanks for joining me and thanks for subscribing.